Okay, before you go and you work out fasted, there's some things that you need to know. And there's some things that you need to know before you make an argument for training fasted. Okay, in this world, we have two schools of thought and it's almost split down the middle with the thought process behind it. One group supports training fasted. They think it burns more fat. They think they get more out of it. And the other group says, no, I get more if I'm fed. I get more out of my workout if I have food in my system and I think I burn more fat. Playing devil's advocate I understand where the arguments come from. Some people, if they are fueled, they can work out harder, which means that maybe they do burn more calories in their workout and maybe they do get more metabolic effect out of it. Personally, I've always found that training fasted seems to work really well. I get more out of it. Maybe there's metabolic differences there, but who really knows? One thing we have to remember no matter what is that you are not burning as many calories during a workout as you typically think. Okay, it's not as much as people tend to believe that they're burning hundreds and hundreds of calories. What it says on your Apple Watch and what it says on your Fitbit is probably not accurate. And what it says on the treadmill is definitely not accurate. So if you're able to push it even 10% more during your workout for 45 minutes, it's a negligible amount of calories. So there's some interesting newer evidence surrounding training fasted as far as performance goes. And this is like earth shattering to me. This is really cool stuff. It's surrounding the world of lactate. What lactate is, is a metabolic byproduct of anaerobic metabolism, right? So when you start training really hard, you have a big increase in lactate. And that's essentially what ultimately kind of leads to fatigue, right? If you want to get nuancy, it's actually the hydrogen that leads to the acid burn that you feel, and it's the buffering of the hydrogen that we need to deal with. But the lactic acid is a byproduct of the fatigue, and the lactate acts as a signaling device to trigger more of a response and an adaptation. So it's kind of like a rite of passage. When you get that burn, when you get that lactic acid burn, that is a signaling device that triggers your body to adapt. So lactate is good, but one of the things that is very important is how quickly we clear lactate. Okay, now lactate clearance is a very important thing and it is the most important thing with this video. So there was a study that was published in the Pakistan Medical Association. Okay, this study took a look at fasted subjects and non-fasted subjects and it put them on bike ergometers, like watt bikes. They had them both start at 100 watts and then every two minutes they increased intensity by 25 watts until failure, until fatigue. Okay, so lactic acid obviously obviously built up. Once the lactate was built up, they were able to measure their lactate levels. Well, the non-fasted group ended up having a small post-workout carbohydrate drink and the other group did not, the fasted group did not. Well, what they found is immediately post-workout and also all the way up to 30 minutes post-workout, the fasted group was able to clear lactate much better. In fact, 84% of the fasted group was able to clear 50% or more of their lactate within 30 minutes. Okay, now when it came down to the non-fasted group, they only had about 46% of people be able to clear 50% or more of their lactate by 30 minutes. What this means is that being in a fasted state allowed them to clear out lactate faster, which could imply that they could perform longer, even though they were not fueled. It kind of doesn't make sense when you first think of it like that, right? But it does because that lactate is also a fuel source. Okay, what happens is lactate can go to the liver and get converted into glucose. So when you clear lactate, you're not magically getting rid of lactate, you are converting lactate into glucose to be used as fuel again. So the more that you are able to clear lactate, the more that you are able to recycle it. And in essence, a fasted person might be able to clear lactate faster. Now there's more to this in terms of a longer term role as well. So when you are designing what you take in the way of like a pre-workout or anything like that, it's very important that you remember this and that you follow this. It is absolutely okay to take things in like caffeine and have pre-workouts, but one of the most important things 
it will be breaking a fast if you have amino acids like branch chain amino acids or essential amino acids. Not that they are a bad thing, but during a workout or in, or in a fasted state, they spike leucine. Okay, this is going to activate mTOR, which kicks you out of a fasted state. A pre-workout that has really, really put it together. I don't recommend pre-workouts a lot because most of them have total garbage in them like those that defeat the purpose is Bomar Nutrition's Melt. People ask me all the time. Seriously, this one is awesome. Okay, not only does it have the typical caffeine that has huge benefits when it comes down to fasting and liberating the fats, but it also has carnitine in it, okay, which isn't a surprise, right? We see carnitine in a lot of things. And the funny thing is, is that carnitine deficiency in someone that is working out a lot is much more prevalent than people talk about. You need carnitine to shuttle the fats into the mitochondria to ultimately be utilized but you only need carnitine if you're deficient in it. Well, typically when you're working out, it's easy to become deficient in it. Another thing that this product has is something called Rewolfia, which is very similar to Yohimbine, which has some pretty pronounced effects when it comes down to potential fat mobilization. So really cool stuff there. Plus, it acts as a little bit of a vasodilator to get a little bit more of uh, blood flow in that case. So a little bit more of a pump in that effect. Uh, EGCG as well. It also has capsicum in it, which is a form of basically concentrated capsaicin. So you're getting sort of the effect of having almost like cayenne pepper and then ashwagandha in it, which is an adaptogen. And I've done a lot of videos talking about how things like ashwagandha have an effect on allowing us to set a new baseline. So we basically adapt to a stressor like a workout better. So in this case, talking about lactate clearance, it makes a lot of sense. And finally, have good dosage of taurine in there as well. So there's a study that was published in the journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition in 2021 that took a look at taurine. And one of the things they found with taurine is that when properly dosed between like one and two grams or one in three grams, it actually had an effect at reducing creatine kinase, which is a sign of muscle breakdown. So when creatine kinase levels are high, it means that you've kind of broken down and you're not recovering from a workout. So this is indicating that taurine could have play a role in how we actually recover. So I put a link down below to check out Melt. It's a really cool product. So again, that link down below will save you a few bucks if you want to try them out. It is a different kind of pre-workout and I got to hand it to Josh over at Bomar. He's definitely slayed it with this formulation. It is awesome. So that link is down below in the description again to save a few bucks. So the more that you continue to train your body to be in a fasted state, irrespective of during a workout or not, the more that you become efficient at utilizing lactate. It's called the Cori cycle. Okay, what happens is the body, when it runs out of available glucose in the bloodstream, is it starts to take other substrates to the liver and creates energy out of them. It does this with proteins, Okay, it does this with uh, even fatty acids. It can take what's called the glycerol backbone of a fat. So like a triglyceride that has a glycerol backbone and three fatty acids. When you break down the fat, you're breaking down the fatty acids off of the glycerol and the glycerol goes to the liver and creates glucose. It's a really cool process. But if you're someone that continually puts yourself under physical stress and workout stress during a fast, your body will learn how to utilize lactate and if it's more efficient at utilizing lactate to turn into glucose that offers a buffer of protection from it breaking down proteins you see what I'm saying there's a potential anti catabolic effect there the more efficient you are at using an exercise byproduct to almost in a perpetual device create energy the less likely you are to have to break it down from protein and break down muscle so again throughout your periods of fasting, whether you are someone that intermittent fasts or you're someone that just trains fasted, exposing yourself to a good burn actually reaps you a benefit in the long term. So although the question might still remain of what burns more fat, a fed workout versus a fasted workout, the long term benefit from performance is starting to shine through. Now it's interesting because there's also some evidence as published in the journal Comprehensive Physiology that being exposed to some heat stress can can also improve lactate clearance. So like sitting in a sauna might actually help you clear more of that lactate and get even more out of say a fasted workout. 
So, I mean, who am I to say that a fasted workout is better than a fed workout as far as lipolysis is concerned? But when you start looking at the data as far as performance, as far as potential longevity effects, as far as autophagy is concerned, there's no denying that being in a severe deficit while you are doing cardio could induce some interesting metabolic effects that may or may not have some positive benefits as far as metabolic optimization goes and potential longevity goes. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.